I like that you brought up the ranking because that's exactly where I was going to go with it. First of all, San Diego State going into the game at 10 and 2. Their only losses was at BYU, who's ranked, and at Grand yep. Canyon, which no team in their right mind would ever go to Grand Canyon and play that game. Hey, Duke ain't you're never gonna see Duke there. You're never Duke gonna see ain't never going there. You're never gonna see Michigan State, State there. there. Nobody's going there because they don't have to. San Diego State went there, it was a close game, they lost. It is what it is. That is it. Right. And I like that you're talking about ranked and where they are and who's getting dude. They're still not ranked. San Diego State is not ranked. Yeah, they got the most others receiving votes. So technically they're 26 in the country, but they're 11 and 2. They have beaten some good teams, including Gonzaga in Gonzaga. And their only loss is to BYU, the second game of the season, and Grand Canyon. That is it. They beat St. Mary's. They beat Washington. You know, they've beat Stanford. They've gone out and, and played teams that they did not have to, and they are still right. not ranked. And on top of that, the a bigger slap in the face. Guess who still is ranked with four losses? Gonzaga. Gonzaga is still ranked. So you tell me, San Diego State, who made the national championship game, returned three or four starters, returned the same head coach. They were preseason ranked. They go to Gonzaga. They beat Gonzaga, their first loss at home in like six years, and they're still not ranked? And you still rank Gonzaga on top of them? This is exactly what Brian Dutcher's talking about. You can only control what you can control. You right. have to go out and, and you have to get a megahorn and blast your own. You got to hype yourself up. Because mm -hmm. San Diego State, for whatever reason, and listen, I know they had a buzzer beater against UC Irvine, and they had a buzzer beater against UC San Diego. But you know what I see? I see a W. I see a W. And if you tell me voters, if you tell me voters on the East Coast stayed up to watch them play know that. UC San Diego, come on. Come on, man. I was good. I, this is the wild part about rankings and why this entire thing always like kind of always gets under my skin a little bit. I can guarantee you the reason why BYU's ranking is what it is is because they beat San Diego State. And when at yep. the end of the year, when you go key wins, one of BYU's key wins will be against mm -hmm. San Diego State, yep. who, by the way, beat Gonzaga and can't get ranked against a ranked Gonzaga. So right. this is – it's all about – and this is why I hope Ladi gets more traction. Because the more traction he gets, the more eyeballs will go to the team and they'll start getting ranked just because of the player that they have on their team. And so that's why it that's why it, recruiting is important. And that's why mm -hmm. getting out guys' names as the front runner is important. It's good to have a good all-around team, but you need a guy who the nation knows and can recognize that name. Because San Diego State, the name is hot right now. You just yeah. came off the national championship, you just beat Gonzaga on television. On big ESPN, so it. I don't. I don't get it, man. I don't. I don't yeah. get it. But they got to keep working because they got a good team. I think they're going to have a really good run this year. I think they're going to finish with probably four losses before the tournament kicks in. So they'll they'll get there. They'll get there. They just got to run off about five or six before people start really paying back attention. Cause that yeah. Grand Canyon loss really hurt them. Yeah, the Grand and listen, Grand Canyon. I think that if you watch the game, and by the way, Grand Canyon's getting votes too. They're not like as high as San Diego State, so Grand Canyon. Yeah, they're, they're not some, flying under the not radar. Some bum, right, right. Like that. Like losing to Grand Canyon isn't like what it would have been to lose to UCSD. Like UCSD is a Correct. much. If they would have lost that game, that's a terrible, terrible, terrible loss. Correct. Grand Canyon, they're they're listen. They're not an established anything yet, but they are. We all understand what that game was. But here's the, here's the thing. Rankings aside, that was about as good as this non-conference schedule could have gone for. Obviously. You wish you could have beat that BYU team, maybe. But yes. Brian Dutcher said, dude, we 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 went to BYU. We went to Grand Canyon. We went to Gonzaga. Because that's kind of the stuff that they have to do to get this recognition, despite going to the national championship mm -hmm. game last year. Here's Brian Dutcher talking about their non-conference schedule and how they finished off. Yeah, we're just trying to build a resume. Like I said, we challenged ourselves. You know, most teams play a lot of these games in neutral sites and uh, we decided we were going to go to Grand Canyon. We were going to go to uh, BYU. We were going to go to Gonzaga and challenge ourselves. And these are the best atmospheres on the West Coast. And so to go one and two is an accomplishment. You want to go three and zero, oh, but to to have be zero oh and two and this is the last environment, it, it was a huge win for us. So now you got the non-conference schedule is done. 
the Aztecs, they will play, I believe, uh, Fresno State to open this the conference schedule. And that game is tomorrow at Vieja Serena. And I think I am going to buy tickets to go to that because I need to go to a game Ooh. this year. Uh, or maybe I'll hate King somebody. But, yeah, I think that's about 11-2. and two. You win at Gonzaga. I think a lot of people probably thought if we are going to lose a game or two, it's probably that one. And they didn't. Browner, I don't I don't think it could have gone much better, to be honest with you, for the Aztecs. I know that, you know, those close calls probably hurt them. But 11-2, you beat Gonzaga in Gonzaga. And by the way, if you don't know how important it is, how rare it is that Gonzaga loses at home, here's some stats for you. It's first non-conference loss in Spokane since falling to UCLA on December 12, 2015. It was just mm. the third time, their third time they've lost at home in the past seven seasons. And it was their first double-digit home loss since 2012. And when they act, when when the committee has to explain why they're still ranked, if you had to ask them, you know what they'd say? That's a good loss. <laughs> <laughs> 